Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in Eve Online. And well, we're still pretty low on news when it comes to the development of the game at the moment. We know from CC that a couple of things are planned. First of all, of course, the gate transition, that new effect should be coming to the game uh, soon. I thought that the last mass test for that one was pretty successful. And then of course, we also have the uh, fleet finder that'll find its way into the agent see as well uh, with some bells and whistles that should make it easy to also create a sort of um uh, new player friendly fleets and things like that so uh, i do look forward to that but of course i also look forward to more news on what ccp is actually planning for the game uh, because at the moment I, I feel like i'm basically in a holding pattern uh, i'm doing some exploration i'm doing my bbcs i'm doing my pi but other than that i'm not really willing personally to commit to any big plans or or, or anything major like let's put down a structure into in uh, in a wormhole or something like that i'm really not willing to do that because i want to know what uh, CCP is planning for the next year. The only thing I saw, I think it was a tweet or something like that, that they are again planning to work with the um with the four quarters, uh, but that they won't hold themselves to that strict three month schedule for every single one. So yeah, let's uh, still wait and see uh, until CCP comes out with an announcement. Um, as always, we will take a quick look at the new Eden store as well. We are seeing some bundles front and center, but nothing when it comes to sales right off the bat. And for the services, also no sales or anything like that happening at the moment. That means that we can make our way straight to the market and as always we'll start with Plex and stuff and that's coming in at two minutes like that all right starting off with plex you can see that in gta itself we're still a little bit above 2.5 million for the sellers and just a touch above 2.4 million for the buyers uh, when it comes to the competition then which is real right perimeter tranquility trading tower taking up a lot of the uh, plex trade but in price right we're still competing very much with each other here still uh, just you know above 2.5 million or pr pretty much 2.55 million I think this is because you can also trade Plex through the app in GTA 4.4 itself. And then for the buyers, a little bit more aggressive here, 2.44 million up from 2.242 uh, uh, when it comes to GTA 4.4. So people buying are definitely grabbing those uh, at a slightly higher price in the perimeter at the moment. Then we have the price history where you can see that our average price has now broken through the 2.5 million mark. On this one year chart, we're definitely at the low end of the um, of the one year price uh, range, pretty much one year low point, although uh, up just a touch uh, in on the 5D moving average at the very tail end here. So more hesitation, I would say, in the Plex market. Same thing as me when it comes to right the plans and, and the future for EVE Online. Um, it really depends a little bit on what CCP is going to announce. Are we uh, set for more nerfs? Are they also going to nerf incursions and things like that? That could really put some more deflationary pressure on the economy and potentially even lower prices for Plex. Or uh, are we looking at a turnaround? And uh, depending on the plans there, we could actually see uh, inflation or an increased interest what did which could increase supply for plex and uh, and and uh, oh increased supplies should drop the prices but th there could definitely uh, increase demand actually for more players trying to plex their accounts and as a result uh, we could actually go up in price so it's, it's really a holding pattern for the market at a pretty low price point uh, it's still a little bit of a gamble to be honest because i would not be surprised if we still take some isk faucet nerfs before we uh, get started on an upward trajectory so i would be careful but looking at this chart of course uh, it looks like it could be pretty juicy if you can buy plex below 2.5 million i think for players that you know when we reach 3 million and, and above that uh, that we're starting to be really worried with inflation and how much isk you had to pay to plex your accounts uh, i think we, we've gone down to a far more reasonable range at this point um, I'm gonna actually do a quick uh, off-screen calculation here, 500 times 2.5 million, like that, yeah, 1.25 billion uh, for, uh, for uh, a month, is that correct? 500 times 
2.5 million. Yeah, all right. So, um, I mean, that feels like it's something that's actually doable. And in fact, that's pretty much what I made in the last week with exploration without too much effort. Uh, my wallet went up by about 1.2 billion. So, oh, all right. Very interesting. Um, definitely very affordable Plex at the moment, I would say. Next up, we have the uh, multiple pilot training certificates. Oh, that, of course, should have given me a little bit of an idea as well. 1.25 billion on the chart for uh, a, a, a training certificate, which is uh, an item that gives your a second character on your account uh, 30 days training time. So we are talking yeah, 1.26 billion for the sellers, just 1.2 billion for the buyers going down pretty quickly to 1.1 billion. So at the moment, definitely a lot of pressure uh, being seen here on these trading certificates as well, showing that um, Plex is uh, no Plex ISK is actually uh, very valued at the moment and not that easy to obtain, which for me personally is an also a motivator. Anything that I do in the game at the moment and I do get a nice return from it means that. Uh, that's been worth it definitely uh, to uh, you know chuck through this this these hard times you could say in Eve Online where nothing is really plentiful or super easy to do or get or anything like that. So uh, let's move on to our skill extractors that of course follow Plex very closely as well. Super close to a one year low point at 286 million for the sellers, 272 for the buyers. Uh, another one, it's that same choice of course. Do you want to invest in extractors or not really depends on your outlook for EVE Online and what CCP is planning with the game. Then we have our injectors that have stalled their descent. I mean, they're still trading at a low point, but kind of confirming my point, I think that players at the moment are, and the market as a result, are in a bit of a wait and see pattern. The war is still raging. There's definitely still fighting happening in the Imperium. Uh, but outside of that, we've basically found an, a new balance situation where uh, for very tiny corporation solo players, structures are very hard to get. So I don't think think that many players are making that a priority or building out their own structure infrastructure and things like that is high on their radar and uh, well, the more veteran players are probably also looking at are we talking new ships new smaller structures what does all of it mean where are we going next and as a result we've got this hesitation here for the large skill injectors as well currently selling for 639 million isk powers coming in at 613 definitely again reasonably affordable i would say uh, especially considering where we come from a year ago for these small scale injectors, we get that same thing uh, hovering just above and just below 130 million on the chart. Definitely again at the, at the low end of the chart and uh, at the moment selling for just below 130 million even. Buyers coming in at 20, 121. All right, but I'm actually noticing here, I'm going to take a quick look at the large scale injectors as well. Yeah, all right, this is like a 26 million margin and for the small scale injectors, we also have uh, like uh, almost a 10 million million isk margin between sellers and buyers that's actually starting to open up here as well which is kind of strange at these low prices when we had this bottom forming we actually had sellers and buyers that tended to get very close to each other but this is starting to open up again with buyers able to go even lower that's pretty impressive for affordability um, it does mean that I, I think my theory is holding true the market really doesn't know which way to go at the moment it's opening up a margin so that we could go lower very easily just a little bit of supply uh, a little bit of dumping could crash the price down a little bit more like 10 million pretty easily or um you know um, we could go up, of course, depending on the news on, and what happens in the game, but no one is really willing to bet that highly on that horse. So that's interesting. After that, we have our uh, exception. Well, nope, not necessarily anymore. Here are the daily alpha injectors, and that's a big one week move from, from around 45 million to probably 40 million ISK, 42 for the sellers, and 38 million for the buyers. Now, we could have two uh, two theories. I, for me personally, uh, on on this one. 
Uh, the first one is that interest has dropped off a little bit as we don't have that much hype and that much new stuff for existing players, I would say. And then the info on the war has died down a little bit. That is one potential. The other one, of course, is that the nerfs to ratting, the nerf to, uh, nerfs to the ISK faucets in the game are starting to finally be felt in the daily alpha injectors as well. You can clearly see that difference between how... Uh, the last couple of months have been for the large skill injectors, <laughs> definitely at the low end uh, with a lot of pressure. And then the daily alpha injectors actually working their way to a one year high point and able to stay for four months, three to four months uh, at around the 45 million and up mark. Something that's definitely a difference between the two. Uh, and what could be happening here now is that we are finally seeing a little bit of pressure on that price because, well, people are just not willing to spend that much ISK on the daily alpha injectors anymore because it's not not that easy to get to that ISK together uh, from, uh, from, from a lot of activities that would have normally uh, allowed them to do that like ratting. Now for me I'm still very positive about my exploration. I have to say my faction pieces that drop especially for Angel Cartel worth a lot of ISK. I, I feel like that's holding very well in value but uh, the daily alpha injectors may finally be showing a first sign of weakness and uh, yeah that's really the question is it alpha player related or is it isk creation related uh, very difficult to stay at this point uh, after that we still have the hyper cores to look at that have definitely gone down substantially again to one year low point and are are now landing at the current rate 261,000 for the sellers 251 for the buyers we do have a couple of volume anomalies i would say that have potentially driven the price back down but if you're looking at this from a general activity in the game perspective then we're definitely at the lower uh, in a in a lower place at the moment potentially uh, meaning again a little bit of lower activity in the game it may be uh, what's happening Next up, we have the mineral market coming in at uh, 1150. And let's get started on this one. You may have seen it from the ticker already. A little bit more pressure on Tritanium. Actually on this chart reaching a one year low point again. But we're still above 6 ISK. So let's keep in mind that 10 ISK was super exceptional. Very, very expensive. The general feeling that I've been having for Tritanium uh, over the last year is that above 7 is a great price. Uh, 6 to 7 is alright. You know, it's a regular price you could sell, you could hold as we get a little bit lower um, and then below six isk is where well you do have to make a little bit of a choice do you want to keep dumping into that market or do you want to wait for better times and we're basically getting straight into the middle of this uh, in jita itself we're selling at 615 pretty much buyers are coming in at 589 and so here you could really start to ask yourself do we want to start holding our tritanium a little bit and hope for maybe uh, like another cap big capital engagement a lot of destruction in nosek does tend to spike the Mount for Tritanium all of a sudden when they need to replace their stuff. Um, on the other hand, one thing is very noticeable, 400 million units, 100 million units, 100 million units and for Tritanium I don't think these are stocks anymore considering we've gone through price ranges of 10 ISK. Anyone that had big stocks has been trying to dump that as much as possible at these prices. So this is definitely a new, um, in my opinion, a new uh, production, you could say, uh, reality for Tritanium. Supplies have gone up uh, supply routes have come into their own and uh, well it's six isk for tritanium at the moment which is definitely a price where you can start to hesitate pyrite is next uh, stalling its descent as well doing okay i would say over the last 10 days or so 1861 so almost 19 isk for the sellers and then 1778 uh, 18 isk for the buyers so not that big of a margin. One worrying thing here, 722 million units. I'm not sure where that comes from, but uh, there is one difference. This is still pretty much the peak performance for Pyrite. So I would not be surprised that this indeed is an old stock that has still been brought into the market trying to take advantage of the current high range. That is going to keep us from going up in price, but considering that it's here, 
No, it's actually pretty recent. This is probably going to put some pressure on the price. If it had been here for, let's say, a week or so, then this performance would have been very, very impressive. But yeah, buy right. I think we are talking uh, a, a, a dump here that happened that is going to put some more pressure back on the price, unfortunately. So if you can still sell right now and be as close as possible to this price, that's probably the best you're going to get for buy right for some time. But uh, once we go through that, who knows where we're going next, of course. And then we get Mixelon that has to give back some of its gains, but it's still well above 125. It's at 131 for the sellers and 126 for the buyers. So this this one is at a very pronounced one year high point. And historically speaking, this is an incredible price for Mixelon. So this is obviously your focus if you're mining in high sig. Your Tritanium, you can definitely start to hesitate on that uh, if you want to uh, you know focus on that or if you want to sell that straight to the market. Your Pyrite, I think you want to try and take still take advantage of this. Um, you know, stay as close as possible to that one big sell order, but the competition is probably going to be pretty brutal and put some pressure on the price. So if you can, obviously try to get your Mexalon. You're still getting an amazing price at more than 125 per unit on this one. And then next up, we've got Isogen. All right, jumped its way back above 40 ISK here. 42 for the sellers and 39 for the buyers. Now, we still have a big order of 177 million units coming in, but the rest of it is starting to feel more reasonable. 80,000, 1.5 million, one of 6 million, 4.5. If we can make these the largest ones, and then we still like get 70 here, and then here the 1.8 billion at 45 is, of course, what's keeping the price in check below the 45 is range so we still have some uh, some uh, production and some oxygen to go through before we can potentially have that um, new supply uh, demand reality with oxygen coming mostly from uh, from low sec um, it's pretty interesting to see though that we're starting to see so now our way back towards that 45 and then back down back to that 45 and then back down so we're we're starting to have uh, wavy hits on this one big order if we could get through that which is gonna take quite a bit of time let's be honest it's already been on the market for like 40 days uh, then uh, we could see uh, a price increase in isogen materialize but we definitely still have to go through a couple billion units before that happens and then we get our other winner here is noxium actually climbing its way to yet another one year high point perhaps already working its way back down but this is very impressive uh, 1,382 for the sellers of Noxium, 1,285. That is a very high price. So if you want to go on an adventure in low sec uh, for uh, for some mining, definitely try to find sources of Noxium because that is a crazy price at the moment, more than five times the price that we started at last year. Then we get Zydrine. Has it overtaken Zydrine? Nope. Zydrine also going back up in price. They're pretty much equal though. Noxium 1382. Zydrine 1385. Just edging out the win when it comes to most expensive mineral on the sell side. 1319 for the buyers. Also very expensive. But percentage wise where we started from of course. A little bit less impressive as this one has always been slightly harder to get. So Noxium definitely in very high demand as well. Noxium and Mixalon still too. Uh, two uh, minerals that have gone up in price quite a lot and are at the moment I would say way above their historical averages as well. Zydrine is pretty much hitting that I think at uh, at this 1250 to 1500 range. I think historically speaking that's a normal range for Zydrine and look at these volumes. 2 million is by far the biggest order uh, here on, uh, on the front page and then down here we get 1.8 but a couple hundred thousand units and even some that just sell 243. I think what's happening here here is that someone may have like refreshed, uh, re reprocessed a big bat batch of uh, of like uh, mission loot or something like that. You get some Zydran. It's actually starting to be worth it to reprocess a lot of that and then just bring those minerals to the market. Uh, in some uh, situations, definitely not all of them. But yeah, that's Zydran one anomaly here. 
uh, with zero uh, is starting to be absorbed by the chart and we're basically still at a very high range and then we get our other anomaly i would say with megasite still stuck at that 600 isk price range 625 for the sellers and 539 for the buyers and it's not like we're seeing a couple billion units keep the price from going up so this one apparently i'd really not need it as much as zydrine and noxium and as a result only worth about half those minerals or they're there's still a supply out there that is creating a mega site somehow um, that is keeping that price in check. That's my read on it. For Isogen, I think it still stocks for Pyrite. I think, unfortunately, that we are seeing more stocks coming <laughs> out of the woodworks as well, trying to take advantage of the current prices and keeping things in check. Uh, but for mega sites, I, I don't see it really. Uh, I mean, 12 million units, 9 million units, it's it's a lot compared to Zydrine, but it's not. It, it doesn't feel like a big stock making its way to the market. It feels like yeah, someone is able to produce produce those 12 million megasite units and actually bring them to the market so um, that's it for the minerals except for morphite of course uh, should really not forget this one i sometimes forget it because it is an odd ball out uh, in the sense that you don't need morphite for tech one production you need morphite for tech two production and this one is actually yeah, still super super expensive 78,000 is almost for the sellers 72,000 for the buyers uh, the biggest winner i think percentage wise this is what six times the original price this is very very expensive and uh yeah definitely something that you can hunt for in Nulsic at the moment as well a, a mineral where a single one of these goes for 75,000 disc more than like salvage and things like that is kind of nuts after that we have the pi market at 2050 And let's take a look at these and especially I'm interested in the uh, advanced PI materials that you can see quite a few of them have had this pattern breaking down since October to one year low point. In fact, broadcast notes went from 2 million down to less than 1 million here um, at the low point. And we get a little bit of a comeback uh, on, on, uh, on the price here, uh, which I think is investors. Uh, part of it, I think, was investors trying to, uh, you know, be ready in case of a structure related announcement by ccp and so we've made our way back to almost 1.5 million at 1.44 for the sellers and 1.2 million for the buyers of broadcast notes still very cheap of course compared to a year ago and even six months ago but uh, definitely away from the bottom range construction blocks are still hovering in that seven to eight thousand isk uh, range at the moment eight thousand for the sellers seven thousand five hundred pretty much for the buyers uh, this is the general pattern that we've been seeing in PI basically losing almost 50% of its value from the start of the year which was already not that hot for a lot of them so as a result here these refined PI materials do tend to be super cheap I myself produce that I produce coolants I produce mechanical parts I produce uh, something that's not on the list anymore and I'm, I'm just hoarding that stuff I'm just waiting uh, for better times when it comes to PI at the moment um, it's a very passive uh, way of uh, producing stuff and just making isk in the game that is has been taking a lot of hits considering that active uh, activities have become a lot more rewarding Consumer electronics, very same story. In fact, just working its way back up a little bit from another one year low point at 5,600 disc. We're now talking 6,600 for the sellers, 5,8 for the buyers. Uh, yeah, compared to 11. Uh, thousand is pretty much at the start of the year which was already i would say a low price for consumer electronics uh, this is uh, not a great chart for people that are producing consumer electronics coolants um, something that i make also not a chart you want to see we start at 12,500 disc which was actually a little bit higher fuel related pi materials a year ago were doing really well i think yep structures were still all up and running people were uh, you know building up their um, their empires around the game in general 
general and so there was quite a bit of demand for fuel and as a result coolants had made that nice comeback and was able to trade at a very high price of 12,500 for something that you can produce on gas planets very very easily very abundant that was an amazing price and then the year started straight down for a year uh, half the price again uh, here at 6250 on the chart we're talking 6700 for the sellers and less than 6000 is for the buyers yeah, this is basically uh, something that i produce and showing you know pi is is really uh, has gone down a lot in value in the game Cryo protection solutions, a uh, very different chart because it is tied to production, production of implants, has actually been able to hold on to its value quite well. 111,000 for the sellers and 100,000 for the buyers. Now it is specialized, so you do. It's a step up from coolants, uh, but uh, you know if you want to switch to uh, something that is valuable right now, uh, which you could definitely do, then look for PI materials that are used in implants. Those seem to have been due uh, to have been. Able to hold on to their value quite a lot more. Enriched uranium tied to fuels uh, again uh, started at 14,000 disc and is currently selling for 7,200. Buyers at 6,700. Although not in a straight line like coolants, it's definitely that uh, loss of 50% over the last year. Integrity response drones then advanced PI materials tied to the production of. Um, Amongst other things, these structures, again, that bottom that has been fort formed here close to a million isk and made its way back to 1.5. In fact, 1.65 million for the sellers and almost 1.5 million for the buyers. So not uh, a full recovery, but definitely uh, making its way back from the bottom. Mechanical parts tied to fuels uh, stayed above 10,000 disc up until October and like a lot of them then the uh, camel's back was broken and we went down and lost 50% of the value almost here it's, it's more like 40% with a low point below 6,000 disc currently 7,500 so 25% loss there and 6,800 for the buyers still a big gap as well between sellers and buyers. Nanites here, um, so again that April, May uh, top bubble, whatever you want to call it, on an implant introduction was very nice and uh, not that great but still 6,350 for most sellers, 5,000 for the buyers. That's also a big gap between sellers and buyers but one of the few uh, refined PI materials here that's actually working its way up a little bit in the last couple of weeks. Nano factories for advanced PI materials, all right, a late bloomer, you could say, uh, a late one that pulls up from uh, the bottom range. So we went well below 750,000 disc. We're back at 930, almost a million for the sellers, 830 for the buyers. Um, a million is what we started a year ago. So this again is starting to look like a pullback from those bottom ranges towards still below average prices, but definitely some interest in the market in being ready with advanced planetary materials organic mortar applicators uh, it's another one starts at around a million isk and goes down to 600,000 pulling up just a touch to 700 but still very cheap 700,000 for the sellers 664 for a first one and 664,000 for the buyers uh, honestly you can start to see that pattern in advanced uh, planetary materials. So if you want to still try an investment, I would say try to buy organic mortar applicators uh, below 700,000 ISK. I think it still has that 30% uh, potential without having lost too much from the bottom range. Recursive computing module, right bottom went down to almost 750,000, started at 1.5 million. That's at uh, that 50% uh, loss again. 1.2 million for the sellers, 1.25 for most, and almost 1.2 million for the buyers. Definitely some renewed interest, or you could also say perhaps we found a new balance, but honestly, we're seeing some volume spikes here and there. So I do think that there's some purchasing happening. 
Robotics finally showing uh, the, its first signs of stopping the descent here. We went below 60,000 ISK. We started here at 90,000 for something that normally, in my experience, is worth at least 100,000 ISK. So this was definitely uh, a big, big loss here again. 30% since the start of the year. We're now at 64,000 for the sellers, 61, almost 62,000 for the buyers. It's still very, very low, but at least I think here, uh, it's been going on for over a week now hopefully we have formed a bottom here self-harmonizing power course again went below a million isk and is currently going back for 1.25 million for the sellers 1.22 million for the buyers as well look at that uh, renewed interest here some aggressive buyers uh, willing to go very close to those sell prices but still nowhere near the 2 million we started the year at sterile conduits another one that if you still are looking for that investment in advanced PI materials, you could look at this one, in my opinion, 820,000 for the seller, 773 for the buyers, started here at almost 1.4 million. So 1.2 should definitely be possible. Uh, again, that upwards potential still exists here, uh, but it is quite noticeable, of course, that we're not talking something that could go back to 2 million like broadcast notes. Um, so that was this one. Uh, nope, no, it was not. Let's see, robotics, yeah, self-harmonizing power core. Correct, no, sterile conduit was, was what I was looking at, there we go. And then uh, we still have the Yukomi superconductors, uh, also, you know, a, uh, a spike here, which was tied to an implant introduction. And this one is going for 72,000 for the sellers, 67 for the buyers, uh, still able to hold on to its value decently well. I was hoping to be able to grab some of these below 50,000 for an implant investment that basically never materialized. So looking at this chart, right, of course, we're still um, down from those peak moments, but that was very clearly that introduction from CCP for some new implants. And then other than that, we're actually pretty flat compared that to the coolants chart. Then this is definitely one that has done very well over the last year in these circumstances. And finally, we've got the wetware mainframes also rather timid uh, pull up from the bottom of around a million isk we're now at 1.35 million for the sellers 1.25 for the buyers it's still that same reality though for advanced pi materials we're, we've pulled up from the bottoms i think bottom formation is starting to show through the pi market uh, but i also do think that quite a bit of it is actually speculation on uh, those new smaller structures that ccp had uh, sort of teased in one of the live streams i believe all right, we can go to advanced moon materials, but first a quick drink. Like that and advanced moon mats at 31 minutes. There we go. Let's take a look at that. I'm mostly hunting for volatility and one of you guys actually gave me a very interesting comment. Um, I always I, I had this instinctive feeling of all right if we see volatility in this uh, part of let's say crystalline carbonite for Galente ships and Galente modules we can expect volatility afterwards and I think my thinking was well, this, this comes before the ships themselves in the production cycles. So if there's problems here, eventually they'll ripple through to the ships themselves through production. But um, what was pointed out is that the exact opposite could be happening, where it's actually ship destruction that is driving sudden demand, sudden need for more crystalline carbonite, for instance, that's then driving up the price. And so the ships could actually be the leading indicator rather than the advanced moon materials. It's Difficult to say, we'll, we'll try and make the correlation at some point, uh, but uh, just a thought, right, I always felt, all right, this is produced first, so if we're getting uh, lower prices on this, we should then also see lower prices on the ships, but it's, it's entirely possible that actually the destruction of the ships is what's going to determine the volatility in first the ships and then the advanced moon material segments. Um, it's definitely possible. So crystalline carbonite up just a little bit from 137 currently selling for 150 bars coming in at 139 slightly above average so it's still very much in line with the galente one that has some volatility but definitely in a reasonable range i would say after that we have for photonic nope that's 
Caliente, and we're talking, here we go, Tatin, Carbide, also the rawest material you could say for Kaldari, just spiked up to like 250 almost on, on a day, has recovered from that, and is landing back on the 175 range, 180 for the sellers, 164 for the buyers, and even before that, uh, we had this lovely volatility, in titanium carbide and so we ended up with a nice sudden uh, super spike you could say on this one chart then we've got our then we work our way back down here is minmetar which is right here fernite carbide that has some volati volatility left in it uh, part of that is because of the Nozick meta with uh, a Minmetar ship, tick 2 ship being used a lot by the Imperium. So that explains this spike and this spike. But uh, the unfortunate thing is that it's, it's definitely moved to a lower range. So you can see the bottoms here are now touching 115 and definitely below 120 whereas before we were always able to defend 125 quite successfully so we still have some volatility in mean matar but uh, definitely moving to a lower range and so here at the moment we basically bounce back again on that 125 and we're back up to just 128 but 140 for most sellers you could say 124 for the buyers so fernet carbide actually looking at these buyers we're slowly trying to get th this uh, this lower defense, uh, this lower price point uh, re-established. But the real question is, of course, can we succeed? Well, once, twice, three times, at least we have not succeeded, which means that from time to time, oversupply pushes the price back to that, that lower range. Uh, it creates some volatility, but it also keeps that uh, from uh, from from reaching uh, these high points of 150 plus and things like that. So, all right pretty good to see actually that we're, we're working an, on another bounce from 125 I would say for Fernet Carbide and then we finally have Tungsten Carbide for Amar which is the polar opposite of uh, that uh, um, Kaldari one with all of the volatility and the highest spike this one basically has next to no volatility and has just moved to that lower range and is, is apparently stuck there for now uh, 140 less than that for the sellers and 135 for the buyers considering we started the year at a 175 to 200 range that's definitely not that great after that, we've got the corresponding metamaterials. Here is Photonic for uh, Galente. Let's see if we can uh, take a look at that. Basically, not moving that much uh, in volatility. We've got just a slow wave up towards 12,500 disc, and, and from time to time, we're being dragged back down. At the moment, 12,000 for the sellers, 11,270 for the buyers. Definitely um, trading below average, but not at the bottom price just yet. Then we've got the non-linear metamaterials for Kaldari. And if you're looking for some volatility, that's a lot better. High points above 25,000 disc, low points touching 17.5 from time to time but definitely below 20k is possible and at the moment we just made our way again in the last month from 20,000 up to 22,500 22 370 for the sellers 21,770 for the buyers pretty much a slightly above average price at the moment but this is what's nice of course you do have that volatility show up here then we get the Minmetar plasmonic metamaterials that uh, are a late spike here as well, uh, working its way back above 20,000. Very impressive actually. 21,700 for the sellers, 20,300 for the buyers. All right, the first Minmetar comeback here. Uh, in the advanced boom materials this is minimatar yes it is um, crawling well successfully recovering from a very difficult period here with a, a low point in december of uh, 12,000 disc and then we've got the amar one left here is terahertz meta materials yeah 15,000 definitely that low range again and we basically just have a move down a second move down and then we're pretty much flat at around 15k so 15200 for the sellers 14.6 for the buyers and uh, that polar opposite from all of that volatility that we're seeing in minmatar kaldari sometimes galente as well um, it's definitely a mar that is that is struggling with uh, being stuck at that lower range then we still have some other advanced move materials. Here is fermionic condensates. Let's try to make a comeback from a bottom of 60,000 disc. Managed to almost uh, make it back to 70k. And then 66,000 now for the seller. 52 for the buyers. The mod has dropped off again. And we are working our way back down. 
Ferrogel next made its way back to 35,000 and above and I think that gap is being plugged very quickly yeah, 33,000 for the sellers 31 for the buyers uh, we'll probably see enough pressure to get close to 30 again Fuller Rights still working on its jump at the moment back above 750 at 824 for the sellers 781 for the buyers the real question is are we going to start to see this here again uh, as well or can what some of these at least maintain their gains uh, i wouldn't bet on it personally hypersynaptic fibers still flat basically below 10,000 is nanotransistors right again same thing made its way uh, started a slight upward strength to 5,000 disc uh, over the last month and then the pressure starts to mount again 4.4 for the sellers 4.2 for the buyers so uh, it just doesn't last very long phenolic composites all right a bit more uh, impressive uh, starts from 12.50 goes to almost 2000 isk a little bit of a pullback on that is quite normal uh, 1600 almost for the sellers almost 1500 for the buyers so the way that you should look at this is uh, in my opinion are we starting to see some volatility again are we starting to see some opportunities to then try to buy low and sell high or is this a one-off uh, where phenolic composites is, is by far the most volatile one all of a sudden and can we actually expect supplies to keep pouring back in taking advantage of any of these bigger prices and will we just keep crashing down and actually uh, being unable to really sell at these higher prices it's a difficult proposition phenolic composites gives me a little bit of hope but a lot of the others honestly are getting squashed very quickly so i'm really not sure to be honest then we get our ceramic fibers just a slow slow pull up from 300 honestly not much to write home about 320 uh, to 317 for the buyers and that's over a one month period we basically went from like 310 to 320 so that's not uh, the same thing as phenolic composites for sure if we're looking for tradable volatility unfortunately all right let's move on to the tech two ships next coming in at 405 like that and let's take a look at this one then we've got basilisk that's some nice volatility back up to 230 million is 220 now for the sellers actually 201 million for the buyer so about a month ago could have bought these for well below 180 you're selling them at 230 kaldari nice volatility let's actually maybe take a quick look at that then um, so we get a november spike and now we get a february spike and then if we go for the non-linear meta materials uh, that's not that great let's take a look at the uh, titanium carbides well it's difficult to say but i would say here on on this one at least we get a big spike that happened just before february to a one-year high point and now the basilisk made its way up um, as a response to that that's what it looks like to me here we get a spike in the ship in november and let's take a look at the titanium carbide one then as well here again a spike here to what was then a one-year high point up to 186 i would say before uh, the spike from the basilisk uh, that happened right here so um, i think that there is a little bit of uh, I think that uh, yeah, the, the production, basically, the carbides are the leading indicator and that the ships uh, respond to that. Uh, now, from time to time, the exact opposite does happen, of course, right? From time to time, you will see one fleet lost. It needs to be replaced. Massive demand, massive spike that will then, um, you know, ripple through to the production cycles. But I would say what you would need for that is a sudden very big jump in volumes and across the board here, here, uh, board here in the basilisk you don't really see that so that's my read on this um, it can happen but i think you need that big volume spike uh, to expect a big purchase of a certain tech one ship a uh, tech two ship excuse me to then have an effect on the advanced moon mats uh, market for now if i look at the last couple of spikes here it's first the moon mats that spike and then the ship that increases in price let's take a look at the cerberus next that one pretty much in line though here oh but yeah again um honestly this is very interesting what we see here is that we've got the early spike for the Cerberus, went up to 280, uh, 280 million right here early January, but on what? 
on massive massive volumes right all of a sudden you've got over 200 units but that's being traded more than double the high points that we're normally seeing and so that makes this one then a leading indicator destruction and a massive purchase drives the price up this one then rippled through the carbide uh, market right here and that now has its effect on the basilisk that was actually at a low point throughout this month and has made its way back up that's very very that's an interesting pattern to look into uh, perhaps to try and materialize some trades later down the line but that's i think that's pretty cool uh, that we can see this on the market here and then let's uh, let's move on to the next one here is the guardian that's kind of interesting then as well from that perspective it's still not a great spike i would say we're still at 197 million for the sellers 176 for the buyers but this isn't a more ship that's been struggling and you can clearly see that on the chart as well we've been hovering at that 180 million and even below that for the last couple of months but finally we're seeing a volume increase uh, to the highest volume of the year which has kept the price still in uh, which has increased the price but you know not a massive spike to 250 million or anything like that so some smart buying i would say but this could start the uh, a first small wave as well in for instance the tungsten carbide market as a result will that happen will that not happen uh, a couple of weeks could be very interesting uh, to see if this pattern actually holds up after that we've got oh i should take a quick look at the price yeah 197 to 176 so it's definitely some buying that's driven the, the um, sell prices up will the buyers be forced to uh, to follow suit that's the real the real competition i would say here in this guardian and amar market or is there enough inertia that basically uh, you know this will be plugged very quickly with new supplies and then it, it may not happen as well so it's difficult to say after that we've got the hound um, that is staying below 25 million is 24 for the sellers 21.5 for the buyers availability not great but definitely plenty for the current market so unfortunately it's not a bottom of 20 million where you could buy and it's not high enough where you could sell at a profit iki tursa for the treglavian um thermometer you could say uh, back above 800 million isk 830 for the sellers 762 for the buyers so still very hard to get triglavian stuff for take two going and then the ishtar made its way back above 230 and is already violently going back down is that correct yeah down to 212 for the sellers 190 for the buyers so a lot of supply of these ishtars finding its way uh, to the market after it reached 230 million is crashing the price back down let's hope that we don't crash back to the 180 uh, million range but uh, that's definitely a pretty impressive uh, rise and then a super fast filling of that gap with fresh with fresh supply now we've got the manticore that was actually at up to 40 million isk and is currently recovering from that spike 29 million for the sellers 26 million for the buyers again kaldari and um you know a first spike probably dragged up a little bit by what happened with the cerberus but then uh we have that major spike in demand all of a sudden in advanced movements as well and so we get this uh this one year high point at 40 million isk for the manticore and that happened after after oops that 10 carbide just after this one right here super super interesting so that was a very nice comment that i think uh helps us develop a new insight into the tick two market tick two sheep market and the advanced new materials market here is the munin slowly making its way back up to a more average price 225 million for one seller most at 235 212 for the buyers so a slight recovery for minmatar you could say which i think in advanced movements we've started to see that as well uh no not amar but minmatar so here you can see recovery for minmatar as well and here for night carbide well some volatility but again here now we're trying to defend that 125 bottom um, so that does seem to have that correlation uh, showing here as well nemesis uh, let's hope that we can keep the waves coming but for now uh, we see a slowdown in volatility on the other hand we're back above 25 million for the sellers pretty much 23.4 million for the buyers very narrow margin at an average price i would say 
the Oniros, uh, that's nice, uh, right? Went up to 230 million, is currently making its way back down. 181 for the sellers, 162 for the buyers. If you manage to buy low and sell high on these two waves, you've probably made a lot of risk. But let's keep one thing in mind less than 25 units a day is the general volume. So it's very difficult to make a lot of trades on this one. Um, on the other hand, right now you're buying for around 161, which is right here on the chart. Do you want to wait for uh, more supplies to crash the price even lower? It's difficult to say if that's going to happen, but this is a lovely double wave that uh, for traders uh, must look very, very nice. Now we get the Panther bouncing off of a billion isk, uh, just above that for the sellers, just below that for the buyers. Not much to say, feels like we're doing okay here um, on price. Not too expensive, not crashing down. Then we get a purifier flat at 25 million as well uh, for Amar, unfortunately, right? Now that low range is here, that lack of volatility is here, and it's definitely showing in the purifier market. Selling for 29 million, all right, buyers at 23 million, perhaps a first bit of volatility trying to be made, but it's that same question as with the Guardian. That's also actually up on some higher volumes. Purifier, eh, slightly higher volumes. Um, the real question is, is there just too much um, too much stuff in the Amar production lines at the moment to actually make that volatility happen? Or is this the start? Then we've got the Scimitar uh, working its way back up to a slightly above average price. That's not so bad actually. 230 for the sellers, 210 for the buyers. When about a month ago you could have bought this for 180. A slight trade that could have been made here. Let's hope again that we're starting to see a comeback for volatility. Then the Widow, that's a bit of a surprise, Kaldari, and actually dropping down to 900 million isk. Uh, a billion for the sellers, but 870 for the buyers. Actually, cheap Widows if you can grab them from buy orders. And then finally, we get the Zealot with another interesting Amar. Increased volumes and the price making its way back above 230. Well, almost. It's being plugged very quickly. 229, uh, 228, excuse me, for the sellers. And still 204 for the buyers. So the buyers have still not been forced to move, but we are starting to see uh, the increased volumes in uh, Mar ships here. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there um, and then how this translates to what happens with the advanced movements. Now, what I will say. Definitely higher volumes on the Guardian, definitely higher volumes as well. Uh, on the Purifier, um, not that visible, but I would say slightly higher volumes as well. So the real question is, will this start to have an impact on there are Smith and materials, right, that are definitely trading at a 25% lower range than about a year ago. And then the other one here for Amar, where you are, tungsten carbide, um, you know, clearly also trading at a pretty damn low range. If you believe that that is going to start to come in, then trying to grab some cheap tungsten carbide could actually be a good idea here. But yeah, that, that makes it very, very interesting. Definitely something that we're going to keep an eye on and showing that difference between uh, Kaldari and uh, Amar at the moment is super pronounced. But yeah, increased volumes for Amar. That may just be the start of something. Next up, the Tech Tree ships coming in at 51.25. like that and let's see i thought that the confessor could perhaps go a little bit higher but i was wrong on that although i didn't say i was sure about this uh, fur increase here we're basically making our way to 50 million and that's it 54 almost for the sellers 47 for the buyers and that's interesting to get then get that average price that's on 50 million that means that we're basically seeing trades happen on both sides there are people dumping to those buyers and there's there's people grabbing them from the sellers to me that's a sign that this is a price where the market says all right that's a tactical destroyer it's 50 million now so let's see what the Hecate has been doing it's basically maintaining a price of just below 50 million isk uh, 49 for the sellers and 44 for the buyers and here right you've got a lot more ships so uh, I think players can just grab these Hecates or mostly grab these Hecates from these sellers that are being a little bit more aggressive just because of the sheer volumes that are there 
so if this uh, dries up and in the last 24 hours we're not seeing that outlandish number uh, of ships coming to the market we could actually you know stabilize our way to 50 million pretty easily then we've got the jackdaw that's actually stabilizing at 45 million so we should see some more ships on the market exactly look at that 45 million for the sellers 41 million for the buyers but a big seller of 300 units that's been sitting here for over a month is of course what's keeping the jackdaw now from uh, making any real moves it's keeping uh, um, this one from um, absorbing uh, you could say uh, any other uh, price spikes it's just you know it's flat here it's really gonna have a hard time moving up from 45 million which should eventually now considering that in my opinion things have stabilized should put some pressure on the confessor right there's no reason to make a lot of jackdaws there's no reason to make a lot of hecates we should start to see more supplies of uh, confessors and indeed here we already have the first 17 units in two orders starting to come in that's probably gonna put down some pressure on that i think again heading towards that 50 million range pretty easy easily finally we've got this vapor that basically still gave the confessor that breathing room by going up to 55 million but this one is the least popular one and so that one is being brought back down to 45 million very quickly 42 million for the buyers on not that much supply for this vapor so i think here now the confessor if you if you followed that advice here about a month ago with a buy below 40 40 million and, and you could probably have bought for like 35 million or something like that uh, from the buyers at that time i would say try to sell now for your confessor because we can expect supplies to start to roll in and to put pressure on this one at the moment hecate has lost that edge as well is currently you know in the normal range i would say and then the jackdaw uh, basically still has to go through a couple hundred chips before it can make its way towards 50 million as well so yeah rather predictably now after the rise of the confessor on all of that jackdaw and uh, hecate um, action that actually managed to make its way up above 50 and then this vapor showing some volatility here as well now we i think are going to have a predictable oversupply of the confessor that's going to put pressure back on the price and then we get the cruisers here is the legion chart trying to hold on 260 million isk 162 for the sellers 146 for the buyers pretty much average i would say it's reasonable to buy if you use them i would definitely not buy as an investment or as a gamble then we've got the loki same story i would say flat above 180 182 for the sellers 167 for the buyers then we've got the proteus flat just below 180 bit of pressure at the end here 170 for the sellers 160 for the buyers but again nowhere near the low points either and then we've got the tengu that actually took a little bit of a beating but from a pretty high range it's currently selling for 175 buyers at 163 um yeah basically nowhere near low points so i would not invest or risk buying any of those to try and sell at a higher price uh, for producers i think they're looking at an okay price but nothing outlandish either so yeah just you know i would say buy it if you can use it otherwise the tech tree cruiser market is um i would perhaps finally uh, in in a more average spot i would say and then finally we still have our extra product and for this week i'm choosing the ice products it's been a while at 5610 like that and so for that we gotta go to manufacturing and research i think it's materials and ice products let's take a look at what's happening here so we get heavy water uh, under pressure definitely going below 75 is at the tail end losing uh, over 50 percent of its value from the start of the year 76 for the sellers and 70 is for the buyers basically rather oversupplied and very cheap not the, the low point right we've been substantially below 75 below and actually for a couple of months slight volatility but no signs of any structural increase in needs for these for the for the heavy water then we get the helium isotopes and that's a reverse situation one year high point going for almost a thousand is here uh, 970 for the sellers 921 for the buyers i think i actually sold off somewhere around here already at the first sign of i was practically breaking even i was holding on to isotopes that i had bought for very cheap for a very very long time 
uh, but now it's basically at a high point you can definitely sell so for me this is another one of these examples of sometimes honestly horizons in EVE Online can take years for trends to, to change and for things to go from low points to high points and these isotopes are definitely uh, in that situation I would say Hydrogen isotopes also a high point above a thousand disc man. That's been so long since we've seen that uh, In fact, we're just running out of this stuff 1400 for the sellers in GTA itself Then I'm gonna first take a look at all of the isotopes so that we get that covered nitrogen isotopes again Substantially above a thousand disc one year high point and then oxygen isotopes working its way to the one year high point right now at 1328 for the sellers um, so isotopes, one year high points, very, very valuable all of a sudden. Super impressive to see. Now we still have our liquid ozone. All right, 175 at the start of the year, 175 at the end. Basically a slight wavy motion, but uh, able to maintain its place in the universe, you could say. And then finally we've got strontium that's doing all right at 4,000 disc, I would say. Definitely gaining uh, like a third of the price, 30% over the last year. 4,000, actually 5,300 for most sellers. So set to go back up a little bit more, perhaps even towards a one year high point. Very, very interesting. I should probably look at this one a little bit more often to try and catch these trends. But uh, right now, heavy water at a one year low point. All the isotopes at one year high points uh, and then something that you really don't see a lot <laughs> i would say in uh, in eve talk and in general considering everything that's happened with the sandbox with the economy the faucets the, the production of goods and things like that something that has pretty much maintained its price range uh, over one year where it started at around 175 and it ends at around 175 and then finally strontium that seems to be working on a one year high point at the moment as well so that's the ice products very very interesting um, I basically sold my isotopes like several maybe I think before the summer or something like that at exactly the wrong time uh, sometimes patience is also what you need in EVE Online uh, and, and another big example I would say of uh, the efforts you put in into the game um, that's the nature of the sandbox, the beauty of the sandbox. Uh, they can really maintain their value over very long periods of time. And so, you know, investments made years ago in helium isotopes could probably pay off right now uh, for uh, for amazing profits all of a sudden. So let's keep that in mind as well. Yeah, EVE Online is uh, a lot more than a hobby. You need that super long horizon actually for a lot of stuff in EVE Online. And for me, that's, that's part of, uh, of uh, what makes the game so amazing. And uh, that's gonna make it for this Eve talk, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.